Oh, hi there. So this module is extra practice module 41. And, and I'll just say it's about the current account and the financial account and the, the balance of trade. And um, there's a lot of little things in here that are kind of tricky. Um, you know, the international capital flows stuff and things like that. And so I would encourage you to spend a few minutes and kind of review the material in this module before you really get too far into it. Um, because I think it can really help clear up some misconceptions. So module 41 is capital flows and the balance of payments. And like I said, it's just, it's a little bit trickier than maybe what we're used to. So it's a good idea to just kind of check it out. Um, so let's get started here, though. Let's assume you, you've done that. Check your understanding. Number one um, is, is four scenarios. And basically, each of these scenarios is a change. And it's asking, is it current account or financial account? Um, now, we know that the current account and the financial account have to balance each other. So like if one goes up and the other has to go down. So like we know that, that if one of them is being affected, the other one is too. But this is really saying like which one is it directly getting counted in. So, you know, we know that the current account is basically imports and exports. So the change of goods and services across borders. Um, we know that it's the change in income across borders. So if there's wages or corporate profits or something like that or interest on bonds, that would be, if it's an international transaction, would be the current account. So that's income and any transfers. So if I just you know, donated $1,000 to a charity in France, that would count. Um, so really, it's you know, if I'm working in France, I'm, I'm an American, and if I work in France, that counts because it's an income. Um, if I buy, you know, if I buy French wine, that counts because it's a good or a service. Or if I donate a thousand dollars to a French charity, that counts because it's a transfer. All of that's the current account. The financial account is stocks, bonds, and real estate. So if I buy a French winery, that's real estate in France. That's financial. Um, if I buy French government bonds, that's the financial account. If I buy um, French companies' uh, stocks, that would also be a financial account. So for each of these, we're just kind of comparing and seeing what are they going to be. Um, a says Boeing, a US-based company, sells an airplane to China. That's the current account because it's a good. B says the Chinese investors buy stock in Boeing from Americans. That's the financial account because it's a stock. Um, and then it says the Chinese company buys a used airplane from American Airlines and ships it to China. So even though it's used and it, it already exists, on the current account, we aren't as concerned with it, like in the sense of GDP, what we are, um, where it has to be like a new product. So this is still the current account. If it's not confusing enough already, uh, the Chinese investor who owns property in the United States buys a corporate jet and he keeps it in the United States so he can travel around America. Now, this is really tricky. Um, this is basically saying stocks, bonds and real estate asterisk um, because real estate here would be like something that you keep in that country. Um, and that would be the jet. Right. So if, if you know, if this Chinese investor bought a winery in the United States, that would be the financial account. And it would include the value of all the things that are attached to the winery. So the buildings and the property and the machinery and everything that's with it, that gets counted on the financial account, even though, you know, it's not technically just the land. It's also like the tractor that does whatever it is. Um, so likewise, you know, the corporate jet, if it's staying in the United States, it's still counted on the financial account, even though it's like a good in that sense. Um, now, the moment that that, that that thing goes to um, China, then it becomes a current account shift. So, so it gets calculated a little differently. You can imagine that it's quite difficult for countries to actually maintain accurate records of, of the current financial accounts. And so realistically, most of the data that's actually collected about this are based on estimates. Um, and, and if you do some digging into FRED, you can actually find the exact estimates of how much the US current account and financial account balances are. Um, and what you'll find is that they don't actually cancel each other out. There's a statistical adjustment in order to make them both do that. And that's because that a lot of those transactions never get recorded, right? It never is something that, that the US government is necessarily informed about. All right, let's take a look at these multiple choice questions. Number one says the current account includes which of the following? So we know transfer payments are counted, factor incomes counted, payments for all of those are counted. So E. Number two, balance of payments on the current plus the balance of payments on the financial has to equal, well, should equal zero. Um, I just told you that in reality, it's a little more, a little more messy. Number three, financial account was previously known as, it, it was called the capital account, but you don't need to know that. So I'm going to take that out of the quiz. Number four, the trade balance includes, oh, so this is, this is just within the current account. It's the trade balance. So it's just the one in goods, right? This is not going to involve anything else. So sometimes people really focus on the balance of trade as opposed to all of the current account, because the current account has all kinds of other stuff in it. Um, so sometimes you'll hear people just focus on the trade balance, and that's um, imports and exports of goods only. Um, a. Number five, which of the following will increase the demand for vulnerable funds? Um, economic growth, that would do that. So 
thinking about that one, that's a little trickier, but the idea here is that if there's lots of business opportunities as a result of the economic growth, right, there's more growth, so people have more money. So if you run a business, you'd want to expand it. You'd want to buy another shop and build a new uh, factory and buy more tools and ovens to make your pizzas and whatever. Um, the other options wouldn't do that. The other options would either reduce demand or they would affect supply. So B, decreased investment opportunities would reduce the demand for loanable funds. A recession would reduce the demand for loanable funds. Um, decreased private saving rates would reduce the supply of loanable funds, and a government budget surplus would actually reduce the demand for loanable funds. Um, all right, so let's take a look at free response number two. Now, this one says use two correctly labeled side-by-side -side graphs of the loanable funds market in the United States and China to show how a higher interest rate in the United States will lead to capital flows between the two countries. On your graphs, label the starting and ending and the size of the inflows and outflows. So, um, so we'll do two graphs. And they're both quantity of loanable funds. And we're just going to show, we'll do China over here and the USA over here, demand. Demand. Now, if the U.S. has got the higher interest rate, then we know that we're going to start that supply curve up here, and the Chinese will start there down there. Um, and the U.S. has this very high interest rate, right? And the U Chinese have this very low interest rate. So the Chinese investors are going to move their money into the United States, which is increasing the supply of vulnerable funds there, right? Quantity and pushes the interest rate down. So we've kind of shown that one. Um, so we'd say U.S. gets an inflow from China. And on this side, we need to decrease it. And we, we want to extend that interest rate all the way over because the interest rates equilibrate. Translation, they will continue to shift, right, until the interest rates end up being the same interest rate between them. So China has an outflow of money to the US. And we've indicated the sizes here and the relative shifts there. All right, hopefully this helped you. See you next time.